Hello! Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. If you are watching on Facebook, like and share this to your wall. Be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for fun posts, upcoming events, and community connection. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website, GloriaDay.com. That's Gloria-Dei.com for podcasts, events, archived worship, activities for the family, and more. Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here. You know, so many of us here at Gloria Day on staff have done our recordings from within our homes. And I've avoided that at any cost because my home typically looks like this. But I just wanted you to show, or I just wanted to show you that not all of us have the perfectly clean homes that you see on our screen. Some of us are living in our homes. (laughs) 
I have a couple of announcements for you before we continue in worship. The first announcement is that Josh and Krista are doing another One Night Wonders. That is on March 9th. It's at 7 o'clock p.m. over Zoom. And they're going to be having a conversation about the wonderment of the great outdoors. So go ahead and join them. Sign up on the Gloria Day website. And then Julie is offering a Saturday morning reset. The title or the theme this month is The Upside to Life's Downsides, The Paradox of Challenge. She writes, Jesus tells us to take up your cross and follow me. What does that mean for us as we work with the particular suffering and challenges in our life? With Julie and the group, come and explore how to work with what challenges us and learn how to spot some possible upsides to the downsides of life. Sign up on the Glory Day website. Every Wednesday, join us here on Facebook or on YouTube for our Lent services. They're at 10.30 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. We love to have you. They're just a special time to um, walk through Lent together in a spirit of worship. So feel free to join us again, 1030 or 630 every Wednesday through March 24th. And then this month is Minnesota Food Share Month, and we're participating in March Milk Madness. But I'm not going to tell you anything more about that because Josh is going to talk about it later in the service. So stay tuned for that. If you're not local, that's not a problem. We're so glad to have you. Feel free to sign up for any of our online offerings. There's so much to choose from. So join us. Finally, we just wanted to invite Mike, Pastor Mike, to give us an update on how he's doing post-surgery. Pastor Mike? Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Mike. As you can see, I've had a little bit of a mishap. On Tuesday, February 23rd, I was out for my morning walk. And you remember there was an old song that uh, was entitled, I Fought the Law and the Law Won? Well, Pastor Mike fought the ice and the ice won. I fell down and shattered my ankle in a couple of places and had to be taken by ambulance over to the Fairview Ridges Hospital in Burnsville. And just this past week on Monday, March 1st, I was uh, operated on. I had surgery on my ankle. I now have a plate in there and a number of screws holding it together. I'm gonna have to be off of it. I can't put any weight on it for about four weeks. But then after that, I can begin some physical therapy and putting some uh, partial weight on. And before you know it, I'll be good as new. But getting there uh, from here will take some time. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for the kind words and wishes and cards and everything that you've been doing. I want to thank my fellow staff members for, for all the ways that they've been helping uh, helping me with, with the work that I do. And uh, anyway, look forward to uh, being around. Uh, I'll just be moving a lot slower. Uh, but God will see me through this. God has seen me through some other surgeries. God will see me through this one. So again, uh, thank you and beware of that ice, folks. Don't, don't make the same mistake I did. Take care. Good morning. Have you ever suddenly become keenly aware that you're carrying a weight? Now, it could be the weight of the weight of a decision, the weight of regret, maybe the weight of fear. Today, specifically, we're going to be talking about the weight of forgiveness, or maybe better put, the weight of what happens when you choose not to forgive. We're going to be hearing Jesus give a, a lesson about this in, the, in a little bit. But for illustrative purposes today, I am holding this 45 pound plate that was lent to me by the friendly, helpful and courteous staff at the Rochester Athletic Club. I do hope and pray that this is in fact a hernia free worship opportunity. <laughs> but I hold it so that we can all ask, what are you holding on to today? I mean, it's the weight of anger, 
or bitterness, the weight of a grudge? What are you holding on to that you need to leave behind? Today, our sermon series that, that we call Check It At The Door continues. It's our sermon series throughout this, this season of Lent. And, and we're asking, what do you need to check at the door? What do you need to drop? What do you need to set aside so that you can maybe move a little bit more freely, so that you can experience a little more grace, joy, and love in your walk through life? Sometimes, we are carrying this weight. We don't even know it. Sometimes the act of just putting it down is a process in and of itself. And, 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 and it could be that, that simply the invitation to put it down is the first step in, 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 in moving into a, a little bit more life giving of a walk. More about that as we go. But for now, my friends, welcome to worship.
Today's prayer comes to us by author Sarah Bessie. Let's go to God together in prayer. God of herons and heartbreak, teach us to love the world again. Teach us to love extravagantly, knowing it may, it will break our hearts. And teach us that it is worth it. God of pandemics and suffering ones, teach us to love the world again. God of loneliness and longing, of bushfires and wilderness, of soup kitchens and border towns, of snowfall and children, teach us to love the world again. Amen. Good morning, everyone. In today's Bible reading, Jesus visits with his disciples about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very pertinent topic to our daily lives, as unforgiveness can hide and crop up in little and big ways during a typical day, showing up in emotions like anger, resentment, blaming, even revenge. When you think about it, the lifespan of these emotions that come out of unforgiveness is very brief. The emotion itself lasts for about a minute or two, but then our mind picks up on the feeling and reinforces an expanded story that caused the original emotion. The emotion of the moment may be short-lived, but then unfortunately, we may hold on to this grievance pattern of blame, self-pity, anger, or resentment for days, weeks, even years. Now, you may not be the angry or blaming type of person, but perhaps your unforgiveness comes out towards life itself or towards God. Your mind refuses to accept something that has happened in the past or is happening now. Or your mind may even refuse to accept uncertainty or lack of control regarding the future. In the past, I've often thought that I was a fairly forgiving person. I wasn't really ever angry at anyone for very long. But then I noticed that I tend to be unforgiving towards life when circumstances don't match up with how I think things should be going. Forgiveness then is a letting go of our inner grievance, not only towards another person, but also towards life. God, or towards ourselves, 
which is sometimes the hardest, isn't it? Forgiveness may happen once we realize that our grievances hold no purpose and in fact cause us great harm, both emotionally and physically. Forgiveness may happen when we see that we really don't want to live our lives with the poison inside of us called unforgiveness, a poison caused again by our minds, our egos, our small selves that feed and thrive on drama and conflict. And this is where we need the help of God's Spirit working inside of us, that loving presence that is capable of forgiving, loving, and having compassion on others and on life, seeing a bigger picture of reasons why others may act as they do or what potential good could come from challenging situations in life that we may want to resist. This morning, I encourage you to see if there's any unforgiveness inside of you towards another, yourself, towards life, or God. As the singing bowl is rung, take a deep breath in of God's spirit of love and compassion and know that learning to be forgiving and how to yield to life comes to us with time and with God's help. reading comes from Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him and pleaded, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. 
And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him of the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed, owed him a hundred denarii, And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and then went and threw him in prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you of all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to you and every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Tariq Kamisa was a 20-year-old college student delivering pizzas for his job, and he was doing that back in California in, in 1995 when he was approached by a gang. A kid by the name of Tony Hicks, 14 years old, was a member of that gang, and he was convinced by the older members of the gang to shoot, and he did. Tariq died. And then Tony Hicks, he went on to be the youngest person in California to be tried as an adult. And he ended up being found guilty and he served most of his sentence in a maximum security prison. Now Tariq's dad is a guy by the name of, of Azim. And Azim just struggled and he grieved. And then he, he said he eventually came to this realization that there were victims at both ends of the gun. There are victims at both ends of the gun. About well, five years after the shooting and after he had been in prison, the two of them met for the first time. Now as Tony was just released back in, in 2019 and, and an organization by the, by the name of StoryCorps, great organization, recorded a recent conversation between Azim and Tony. Check this out. It took me five years to develop enough courage to come and meet you. What do you remember about our first meeting? We were in the visiting room in Folsom State Prison. I had been anxious over meeting you. I felt so horrible for what I did that I wanted to be able to do something to help you heal in some type of way. I was amazed of your composure. You didn't portray any of the typical attitude of a 19-year-old in our culture. Well, coming into a maximum security prison at 16, I had to grow up and mature a little bit just to survive in there. You know, one of the questions I had for you is if Tariq said anything to you, because you were the last person to see him. We locked eyes for a long time. It's painful. It was the most difficult conversation that I had in my life. You were remorseful. You took responsibility for your actions. And in that moment, I got that the spark in you was no different than the spark in me. It was at that point I told you that I have forgiven you. Your forgiveness was heavy on me. I didn't feel like I was deserving because I knew what I had taken away from you. But your example gave me space to work on understanding that I was worth being forgiven. I always felt forgiveness is something you give to yourself. I grew up in the Sufi tradition, and I think that helped me a lot to know that I didn't want to go through life in anger and revenge. And after our first meeting, my stride was much bouncier leaving the prison than the one I'd walked in with. And I thought to myself, why did I wait five years? Because it was a gift. And I honor you for doing that. Years later, when I was released from prison, I wanted to go back to where I murdered Thari and just bring my past and my present together in that moment. I wanted to reaffirm to Thari, 
I was a changed person and that I wouldn't squander this opportunity. I liked what you said, Tony, to bring your past and present together. That pain is not a bad thing if it makes you a better person. That's how I feel this journey has been for me. You are instrumental in the person that I am today. And I am extraordinarily grateful to know you and to have you in my life. Such a remarkable and profound story. I love it how Azim said, you know, after our first meeting, my stride was much bouncier than the one that I had walked in with. And then there's Tony who said, your forgiveness was heavy on me. Your forgiveness was, was heavy on me. I didn't feel like I deserved it. I knew what I took from you. But your example, it gave me space to do the work and to ultimately understand that I was worthy of being forgiven. Carrying the weight of, of anger or, or a bitterness, carrying the weight of a grudge can be a lot. And the weight that you carry or that I carry might be very different from the weight of Azim or, or, or Tony, but make no mistake, we still might be growing weary under the load of, of carrying this weight for so long. In the scriptures, there's a word for forgiveness comes from the Greek and, and, and the New Testament is originally written in Greek and it's the word is aphiomi and aphiomi is translated as forgiveness but it really holds this understanding of of to let go or to release or to set free from your heart from the core of your being aphiomi and we see this this lesson this word all over the New Testament but we especially see it in this lesson that we heard today See, there's a friend of Jesus, a guy by the name of Peter, and he says, look, if somebody sins against me, if somebody does me wrong, how often should I forgive them? And then he thinks, maybe seven times? And you can almost hear Jesus smile and say, no, not seven, 77. Now, when he says 77, uh, se the, the number seven is symbolic in that day of, of like the perfect number. So not just seven, but a huge number, 77, super perfect. And he's not saying that once you hit 78, like there's an accountant in the back somewhere keeping, keeping score. And once you hit 78, you're out of luck. No, no, no. A massive, perfect, infinite number. That, that is what forgiveness is all about. And then he tells this strange parable, this strange story about a king who has a servant and the servant is is just way in debt to this king. Servant asks for forgiveness of the debt. And, it, and, and as the story goes, Jesus says he owes him 10,000 talents. Now he's telling this in this giant language, right? This giant story. But 10,000 talents, talent is a, a unit of money. And one talent is equal to about 15 years worth of salary. One talent, 15 years of salary. And he owes him 10,000 talents. So that's like 150,000 years worth of salary. In today's money, that's approximately 6.9 billion, with a B, billion dollars. Just an insurmountable debt that one person would have. And he asked for forgiveness, and guess what? The king forgives him. He says, fine. And he lets him off the hook. He gets to put down his weight. He gets off of this, of this horrible, this horrible place of debt. But then he's walking down the street, the servant that's been forgiven all this debt. He comes across a guy who owes him some money. And this has like a hundred denarii. That'd be like $17,000. Chump change by comparison, right? He owes him $17,000. And and so this guy has no forgiveness. The servant who had been forgiven so much has no forgiveness for the other guy and has him thrown in jail, debtor's prison or, or whatever it was. Now, of course, the king hears this and he is not having it. And the king ultimately has 
the original servant that he had forgiven the $6.9 billion has him thrown in jail so that he can suffer too. And scene. <laughs> nice story, huh, Jesus? I mean, it ends with, well, this guy's going to suffer. Uh, he's going to suffer and rot in jail. There's more going on to this story, though. It's a strange and brutal tale. But through this story, Jesus is teaching us. He's inviting us, really. He's inviting us to set free, to release, to let go of the weight that we are carrying. Let go from our heart so that we can experience a new kind of life, so that we can experience forgiveness. He reminds us that not forgiving, that not forgiving is going to be mean carrying that weight infinitely. Not forgiving is how we suffer. I heard author uh, author Anne Lamont once say that that not choosing not to forgive is like drinking rat poison and expecting the rat to die. <laughs> not forgiving is like drinking rat poison and expecting the rat to die. Choosing not to forgive it's like saying that this beautiful 50 degree day in, in March where the snow is melting and the sun is shining and that the God that created all of this and the birds that are starting to sing and the hope of spring all around us, that the God who created all of this is thoroughly incapable of healing your heart. So I ask you today, what is it for you? Like, what is it for you this morning? What is the weight that you are carrying, the weight of, of forgiveness? And sometimes, sometimes it's about forgiving someone else. Other times it's about forgiving, forgiving yourself. Sometimes it's so massive, it's so heavy, it's so much that the best that we can do is hand it over to God and let God let God own it. Let God take it from us. Like I think about Azim and, and Tony in the story earlier. They had to work through that forgiveness. And, and forgiveness, it, it meant that there was consequences. Tony spent 24 years in prison. There were consequences. Forgiveness didn't mean forgetting. It wasn't about forgetting for them. They remember. They, they talk about his name. They say his name, Tariq. Forgiveness was a process. It took a long time, and I imagine that they're still working on it. But what they are doing is modeling for us how to work through it, how to work in this process. How do we reconcile? How do we forgive? How do we let go from our, our, our hearts, let go from the core of our being? So again, I ask you today, what are you carrying? What is that weight that you are carrying? Maybe it's a, it's a personal thing that, that goes back many years. Maybe it happened last night. Maybe it's something that has deeply shaped you over time. But here's the thing. Today, Jesus speaks and he says to you, my child, it's time to let it go. It's time to release it, to set it free from your heart, from the in the very core of your being. And it might take a while. It might be a process, but it could be. It could be that it's a process that begins today. And so may, now may the, the God whose word set the cosmos in motion, whose, whose spirit and love brought all things on heaven and earth into being, May the God who, whose breath gives us life, may, the, may this God breathe new life into your troubled and weary heart so that you might, so that you might be whole, so that you might experience joy, so that you can let this weight go. Check it at the door so that you may have life.
The following prayer is actually written by Pastor Emily Swan of Ann Arbor, Michigan. I've adapted it a little bit to fit our needs, but I want to give her credit for this. Let's go to God in prayer. Spirit of Jesus, come with fire that refreshes, wind that topples, breath that fills. Kindle a global revival of empathy, justice, and active peacemaking. Birth a witness of love that is bigger and better than we inherited. Liberate us from privilege and oppression. Unshackle the gospel from nationalism, colonialism, white supremacy, and every other lens that shrouds the good news. Give us an abundance of grace for others and ourselves. Grant us compassion for those who suffer, both our own and those we do not know. We think especially this morning of Dorothy Ogg, Dorothy Rischel, Steve Blanchard, Wendy Semph, and Pastor Mike Zasky. Free us from the influence of money, power, and acclaim. Restore our reputation for caring for the poor, loving our neighbors, being ambassadors of peace and stewards of the earth. Let us stand for love and with love, following the way of your son as best we are able. Let us not fear an ex experiential spirituality. Let us hear your voice and tangibly feel you with us. Let us discern your guidance. Let us abide in and with you. Show us what you're doing so we can work together. Move where you will, when you will, in whatever way you will. Come, Holy Spirit, and restore your church. Amen. Like I said earlier, I'm recording from my home, and it's not the cleanest place in the world. <laughs> But that got me thinking about the Last Supper. And if you'll remember, when the disciples were at the Last Supper, Jesus got up from the table and took off his outer robe, wrapped it around his waist, and then he got down on his hands and knees and he began to wash the disciples' feet. He actually got down in the dirt, got dirty with the disciples took the dirt from their feet. He met them in the place where they were most soiled. And when I think about you coming into my messy kitchen, I think about Jesus getting down and washing the disciples' feet. Jesus got to the dirtiest place with the disciples, just like Jesus goes to those places in our lives too. And when he meets us there, he doesn't judge us. He just feeds us. So keep that in mind as we receive the Lord's Supper today. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he offered it to them saying, this is my body. It's been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and after he'd given thanks, he offered it to them, to all of them saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. When the disciples asked Jesus, how should we pray? Jesus taught them to pray saying, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <laughs> Amen. That's my dog back there rum rummaging through the trash can. That's what happens in the Rotman household. <laughs> With that, receive the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Because of how we connect. Community talk. Hey community people. It's March again. It's been a year and this whole time we've been connecting over and over and over here. We are worshiping together. We may not be able to see one another or hear one another, but we gather together. And I am sure we have had some shared experiences. For example, he's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. How does he do it? Harold, you are a treasure. Good morning, Julie. Yes, my favorite. It don't have a job. Won't pay your bills. Be thou my vision. Knocking at your door. Love will hold us together. Make us a shelter to weather the storm. Time to pray, time to pray. Oh no. No. Pray in hands, pray in hands. Pray in hands. Amen. Amen. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh my goodness, it's my friend. Oh no, communion. Sharing stories of how we connect. Community talk. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go make some coffee. Every kid needs snow pants. Oh, we're buying snow pants. We're buying snow pants. We have a condo? Oh, I wanna see Dave milk a cow. <laughs> What's that to you here? Is that the bells? Bitty Chris, do you hear the bells? <gasps> Bitty Chris, guess what? What time is it? Is it time for communion? Is it time for communion? Any of those familiar? We are worshiping together. At times, responding and reacting in unison. Shared experiences, sharing connection. This is worship together. Like then, and now, and for all time to come. I'll see you next time for more Community Talk. March means Minnesota Food Share Month. We started a challenge to raise $1,500 for March Milk Madness. And we've already raised over $500. That's awesome. And yes, that means we're that much closer to seeing Pastor Dave milk a cow. With this challenge, our sustenance committee has agreed to match our goal and up their matching another $500. That means they'll match up to $2,000 of in-kind donations. So if we raise 2,000, our giving is doubled to 4,000. That's that, that's a lot of milk. Dave, I hope you're ready because it looks like we're gonna hit our goal. I'm continually in awe of how generous our congregation is with your time, your financial donations, and your willing hearts to serve our community. So here are a few ways to give. You can give through our fundraising page on Give Butter. That's www.givebutter.com backslash milk madness backslash Gloria Day Lutheran Church and or you can give online, mail contributions to church, or you can text to give at the number shown on the screen. And memo, March Milk Badness. I am looking forward to getting fresh dairy to our hungry community members. And I'm also excited to hit that goal of 1500 because I want to see Pastor Dave milk a cow. All of the proceeds from this will go to Channel One Food Bank with a specific designation for dairy products. I want to say thank you to our sustenance committee for matching our giving, and also to Carrie Osman, who's one of our members, and she's also the lead fundraising organizer for March Milk Madness. This is how we continue to be Gloria Day together. 
Thank you for sharing your generous hearts, your prayers, and your financial donations to the ministries at Gloria Day. Go on, lay your troubles down. Set your feet on solid ground. Be steep as I have found. I want to follow you. Come on, all you weak and weary. Come round now if you can't hear me. For a sick and God feeling. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. Your troubles, leave all your sorrow, set down your burdens, come on and follow. Come on, heavy laden, don't wait for tomorrow. Come on, my brother, come on and follow. Go on, leave your worries too. Not a bit of good they do. There's the words coming through. Go on, leave your worries. So I call your name in the middle of the night. I want to know can you hear my cries? June, heat, and moonlight. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. Leave all your troubles. Leave all your sorrows. Thanks for being with us this morning, everyone. It's always a great pleasure to have you here. We hope you'll be back again next Sunday with us on either Facebook or YouTube at 9 a.m. We'll hope to see you next Sunday. Today we send you with some words of blessing um, from uh, a blessing written by Eric Williams. Some great words about the path, the journey that we're on. Today we've talked about forgiveness and what that all means. And we're, we walk alongside Jesus during this special season of Lent. So on your journey today, we send you with these words. Blessed is the path on which you travel. Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is your mind that discerns the way. Blessed is the gift that you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you will become on the journey. May you go forth with courage. May you walk with Christ. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.